there are so many ICT concepts out there. So I did a lot of research for you guys to find the best ones. The last one is maybe or maybe not the best one. So stay tuned until the end of the video. The first ICT concept is the fair value gap. And it is very easy to identify. We just need three candles and the first and third candles wicks are not overlapping the second candles body. And if this didn't make sense, I hope my beautiful drawn example will. So we see we have three candles right here. The first and third candles wicks are not overlapping this body. And what I mean by that is if you take this first candles wick and extend it out, and then the third candles wick and extend that out, we can see we create a kind of gap between the second candles body and these two wicks. And this gap is called a fair value gap. And this fair value gap, we usually see price move down into and then use that fair value gap to push price higher. The same over here, a bearish example, we see we have that free candlestick pattern formation. The first candle, we can see we have that wick. And if we take the third candle's wick and also extend that out, we create this kind of gap between the second candle's body and these two wicks. This is called a fair value gap, as we can see. So when price moves up into this fair value gap right here, we should see price move lower again. So that's how we can identify a fair value gap. Remember when I said that the first candle didn't really matter, but the second and third candle did. And that's because the second candle can tell us if the fair value gap is bearish or bullish, such as right here. Let's say that this second candle was a up close candle, then it would be a bullish fair value gap. But if the second candle was a down close candle, it would be a bearish FVG. And the third candle is really the decider whether it's going to be a fair value gap or another ICT concept, which I will get into later. So let's say that this third candle were to, or the wick were to stay up here, then it would create a fair value gap. But if the wick were to move all the way down here, reaching the other wicks high, then it would not create a fair value gap. As we can see that there is a gap between the second candle's body and the two wicks, as we can see right here. By the way, I just want to say to the more experienced traders that this is going to get more advanced, so stay tuned. We can see here on the charts that we have a fair value gap, and it works really well. But there's a bit more to it than just a fair value gap, as a fair value gap in itself can of course work, but when there's more PD rays and more confirmation combined with a fair value gap, there's higher probability for that fair value gap working. For example, right here we can see that this fair value gap, if we use our Fibonacci tool, from this high down to this low, it was nested within a premium or the equilibrium of the range, meaning there's higher probability for that fair value gap working. If you look more over to the left, you can then see that we have a order block. And I won't really go in details in what a order block is, but the idea that we have another PD array also supporting the idea of lower prices combined with the fair value gap that's within a premium, give us strong confirmation that price is indeed most likely going to expand lower. And we can see after price reached up into that fair value gap, combined with the order block, price then expanded lower. The next ICT concept is the inversion fair value gap. And this concept is very valuable to us as ICT traders because it can give us very strong confirmation and on top of that, many different trade opportunities. It's easy to identify a inversion fair value gap. We just need a fair value gap, as we talked about before, and then a candle close above that fair value gap. As you can see right here, we have a fair value gap, then price makes a close above that fair value gap, and it becomes a inversion fair value gap. And this inversion fair value gap is going to send price higher, as it is the opposite of a normal fair value gap. So if the fair value gap in this case is bearish, then the inversion fair value gap is going to be bullish. I really hope that makes sense. And if it doesn't, please comment down below. So then price should make a retracement down here and from there move higher. As we have a bearish fair value gap, then the inversion fair value gap is going to be a bullish one, sending price higher. Here we have an example of this inversion fair value gap that is working. But same as the fair value gap, there are some inversion fair value gaps which is higher probability than others, such as this one as currently price is getting supported by this SMT, and I won't really get that much in details with it. And also there isn't any other fair value gaps besides this inversion fair value gap, meaning that there's no area 
where price can reverse from. And if we zoom out, we can also see that we have a very strong draw on liquidity, which is this high up here, which is a data high. So price is most likely going to reach for this area. So when we have more Peter raise and confirmation combined with the inversion for value gap, it becomes high probability, same as the fair value gap. Next up, we're going to talk about a specific order block, which is called a change in state of delivery, CISD. The way we can identify a change in state of delivery is first by looking at an important level, such as sell side liquidity, a point of interest, etc. Then we want to see price react from that important level and close above the down close candles or candle going into that important level. And when price have done that, we can then anticipate price to reach down into that change in state of delivery. And then that change in state of delivery is going to act as support, pushing price higher. And for a bearish example, we will want to see price reach up into an important level, such as buy side liquidity, a point of interest, etc. And then those up-close candles or a singular up-close candle reaching up into that important level, we would then want to see price makes a close beneath. And when price makes a close beneath those up-close candles, we would then want to see price make a retracement going up into that up-close candle or up-close candles and then push price lower, reaching another important level. When looking for a change in state of delivery on the charts, we first want to see price reaching into an important level, such as this fair value gap right here. And we can also see the price swept sell side liquidity on top of that. So right here, we can see price have reached into an important level. So now we should see price move higher. And then we would want to look for the down close candles reaching that important level, such as this down close candle right here. Or we have two consecutive down close candles, and then we want to focus on the highest up close candle. Now we can see that price makes a close above the body or the highest body of a change in state of delivery. And price does not need to close above the wick of a change in state of delivery, it only needs to close above the highest body. We can see price makes a close above the body, and then immediately after doing that, price makes a retracement into this change in state of delivery. And then from there, we can see price just keeps expanding higher. So what really happened here was that we had our change in state of delivery formation, price reaching into an important level. And from there, we can then see we had two down close candles reaching into that important level. Now, when we have down close candles reaching into an important level, we know that a change in state of delivery is possible to occur. Then we can see price makes a close above the highest body, which is necessary for a change in state of delivery, but it does not need to close above the highest wick of a change in state of delivery. So then price makes it close above the body, and to mark out the whole change in state of delivery range, we could then go from the body all the way down here. But I just prefer to mark out the bodies. So then we can see price makes a retracement right after making a close above the highest body of the change in state of delivery, validating it as a change in state of delivery, reaches a bit down into that change in state of delivery, and then from there, we can see expands higher. Next ICT concept is called a volume imbalance. And this ICT concept we usually see is combined with a fair value gap, making it very powerful. But in itself, it's also very useful. The way we can identify this volume balance is by looking at a gap within price where the wicks are overlapping that gap. And we can see right here where we have a small gap where there are two wicks overlapping each other and that creates a volume balance. And then we want to see price trade down into this volume balance. And then that volume balance, we want to see act as support, pushing price higher. Same over here, where we have a bearish volume balance. As we can see, we have a gap where the wicks are overlapping each other. Then price is going to reach up into this volume balance. And then that volume balance is going to push price lower. So that's how we can identify a simple volume balance. Here on the charts, we can see that we have a volume balance as these two wicks are overlapping each other within a gap. And this volume balance is of course used to send price higher. But if we look a bit closer down here, there's also a Favalli gap, which also can be used to send price higher. So already we have two ICT concepts combined with each other. And when we have a volume balance and a Favalli gap combined with each other, we're going to mark out the whole range right here. So when we're looking at the consequent encouragement, we're going to find the true consequent encouragement such as this one. So instead of looking at the charts this way, we're going to look at the charts this way. 
The meaning behind a volume balance and a Fibonacci gap is going to be that there is a higher chance of price moving higher when reaching into a volume balance and a Fibonacci gap. The last ICT concept, which we all have been waiting for, is not very known amongst ICT traders, but it is very, very powerful. It's called a immediate rebalance. Now you may wonder, why are we at the beginning again? Well, it's because a immediate rebalance is very similar to a fair value gap. The way we can identify this immediate rebalance is by looking at the third candle within a fair value gap. So if this third candle's wick decides to move lower, reaching the first candle's wick, then it is going to create a media rebalance, as we can see. Now, this media rebalance can tell us that price should now expand higher after creating that media rebalance, as price failed to create a fair value gap, which we would like to see price move down into, and instead created a media rebalance, which we would very much like to see price not reach into, as there is nothing to reach in for, as therefore there is nothing to support price moving higher. I hope you are understanding what I'm trying to explain here. And also, the bearish example. That would be that the third candle is going to reach up into the first candle's high of the wick, and then from there, we would like to see price expand lower. The example of this immediate rebalance on the charts could be right here. As we can see, price at this point in time had the opportunity to create the fair value gap, but instead, price chose at the third wick to wick down into the first candle's high of the wick, creating an immediate rebalance. So now we could be anticipating price to expand higher. And as we can see, price is slowly starting to expand higher. And if we just take a close look to the first candle's wick, if we use our Fibonacci tool from the low up to the high, we can then see that price reached the upper quadrant of this wick, and that is an algorithmic signature. And then from there, price is now starting to expand higher. So that's also something that we can notice when looking for an immediate rebalance. And you may now find this example a bit familiar. And it's because it was the change in state of the Leary example. And the immediate rebalance was created right when price reached down into the change in state of the Leary, meaning that we have two PDRAs supporting price in moving higher. But this specific example is really high probability. Because when price creates an immediate rebalance, we know that price should not move lower and only expand higher. So if we took a trade entry based on the change in state of the lorry, we would then be very happy to see a immediate rebalance as it gives us strong confirmation that we now should see higher prices. As we can see right here, 